Thank you very much, Neil. Um, hello, everybody. And uh, I'm very happy to be here to speak about uh, our project. And uh, it's a pleasure to, to, uh, for me to speak after a presentation of uh, Sea Change and the wonderful talk of uh, John and Paula, who already explained what ocean literacy is and what we explained a little bit about what our, what is the uh, the realm where we will be working on, and they explained how the projects, these two projects, will be already connected and collaborating. And um, I um, will start by saying that we also just started our project. Uh, it's um, we will have the same uh, kickoff meeting together with Sea Change, and uh, we have. 15 partners, and today I'm pleased to, to uh, introduce that we have four, uh, three more uh, partners present uh, with me here. It's uh, my colleague uh, Pierre Strosser from Acteon. He is, was at the beginning of uh, um, uh, how say, the, the founder of the project uh, and uh, had the idea of, uh, together with other partners, to come up with it. Uh, I'm also pleased to say that we have uh, our uh, Canadian partner, uh, Paul, he will be speaking about uh, the transatlantic connection after me. We also have uh, Dr. Steve Fletcher, uh, he from the University of Plymouth, is our partner uh, from the UK. And uh, we'll have more time at the coffee break to talk about all the things if you want to. Uh, now, if I manage to do this, uh, to tell you about the project, just in in few things, I want you to um, think of an image of um, maybe a little bit of a storytelling. Just like John was talking about Shakespeare, I would like to take you to the a story of the Little Prince. Maybe many of you have read it when you were children. Maybe you know it as adults because it's been translated in, I think, all the languages and. It reached both children and uh, adults. And um, there's something that I want you to think about it when we, mm, when we think why we are responsible, why we care about things. Uh, in this story, uh, Little Prince had a rose. And um, I found this today at our coffee tables, <laughs> which really reminded me of that story and even strengthened the image that um, the, uh, the rose had its own little things that it needed to be covered at night. It had the uh, thorns, it had some complaints. And uh, little prince, was uh, he left to look for other things. But then uh, in his travels around different planets, he was keep thinking about the rose. And then he realized that he's really um, cared for the rose, for all these little things that the rose had, the complaints, the things that needed. And then he realized that he's really become responsible for it. He had to find it. He had to find uh, his rose. And uh, when I think of our project, I think that uh, the, we can think of uh, the ocean as being the rose. And then there is a little prince in each of us, both uh, children and adults. And uh, we need to find a way to find the rose. Because in the story, it's also uh, one of the sayings of, li of Little Prince was that there may be thousands, millions of the same of roses all over the world, but he only cared for one. But how do we make this connection? Why? Um, why we haven't done it yet? Why? Why um, we not uh, yet responsible for our oceans and uh, the seas? And uh, when we in, in the proposal, we thought that uh, explain to. Um, it by different factors, that there is a complexity of the human-ocean relationships because there's so much going on which connects us to the ocean. It's as citizens, as uh, consumers, um, those who live closer to the sea see the connection more uh, easily. Those who are, uh, live a bit far, they don't feel it that much, but they still benefit from the ocean and their actions can um, uh, directly influence the health of the ocean. Also, there are a lot of different communication messages that come uh, through the media, but they're not maybe uh, going to each person's heart. They don't uh, reach everyone because they're a bit confused. Some of them saying you need to reduce your pressure, some saying you need to uh, 
uh, that the oceans are great ecosystems. So there is there are different target groups, and each of them um, need we need to understand what knowledge they need, and how they need uh, to to um, to use this knowledge, and um, so there's there's a not uh, maybe um, a coherent understanding of who knows who knows what and who can act on that. So what is our project wants to do? We aim to support the emergence of effective and dynamic ocean knowledge system, which contributes to raise the awareness of uh, and, and responsibility of uh, both individual and collective, direct and indirect, and um, help to um, raise uh, the interest in healthy and sustainable ocean. Now, what uh, are the questions that we want to answer? Like I said, uh, there is a, a very complex uh, human-ocean relationship. So, what do we want to know? What are the priority issues? What what needs to be discussed? What what information we need? Then we'd like to know who are the main stressors um, that we can. If we change their behavior, we can change the situation, and we see maybe there are new opportunities. We also want to know how the knowledge on human and ocean relationship can be produced and can be shared. And at the end, we'd like to know who could be those influencers, so the, the individuals or maybe organizations who can bring the change into literacy and thinking and who could affect maybe larger groups of uh, people. So uh, in short, I tell you what we are going to do. We would, uh, together with um, with Sea Change and perhaps many other organizations who, who are in this room, we would try to build a publicly accessible and uh, structured knowledge base, which would uh, help us to capture those relationships, human-ocean relationship in its complexity. We would, uh, but it, not 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 only because there are many knowledge already exists, many platforms, many. Um, different uh, places where knowledge is already collected, but we'd like to actually develop and test a participatory process for uh, developing communication towards each of the particular groups or become uh, 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 maybe a, a bit of better channel for this uh, different knowledge to be communicated. Um, we, <coughs> we would also <coughs> build a thinking how we can develop a more clear guidance on how um, the ocean literacy decision makers uh, could aim uh, their, uh, their, their knowledge and how they can change the behavior. And uh, um, it, the last on my slide, but not the least, we will uh, develop a package of uh, different, meaning like innovative uh, communication materials and products. So we'd, uh, we, we envision all kind of different uh, social media, um, serious games, somewhere we can test things in a real life situation. So not just to say here is the, uh, um, some educational package, but we try to test it, whether it really reaches and could possibly change the behavior of um, some actors. And, um, I think we would plan all kind of different things in, with the help of our partners, who are uh, very good in in, um, in this sort of uh, technology. So we are planning uh, even I think the film festival. Um, if I have one more, okay. The quick uh, overview on how our um, uh, project is organized. You see that we have. Um, variety of work packages. One of them is uh, the creation of this knowledge base. Then we see how the ocean economy works and build out of that the ocean knowledge system. So we find out what, who should be targeted, who are the people who could be influential and what type of materials we need to develop for them. And then it, uh, with the work package five, we go into the dissemination and developing and testing those products. As you see, we have uh, five uh, different regional focuses, and Atlantic Ocean is one of them. So I think it makes it very, very relevant to 
uh, this audience here. Um, we are planning also to have an ocean literacy think tank where uh, we would invite uh, 12 uh, uh, high-level representatives for the ocean knowledge to be consistently involved in our project and advising and helping and facilitating um, the results of our project to be more uh, useful and uh, efficient. And as we already been mentioned together with John that we will have uh, a lot of collaboration together uh, with Sea Change. The transatlantic dimension, because we, I was thinking how to uh, make it more visible for for you today to see where the responsible project um, may be interested for many of you, so we can uh, collaborate more. Is that we do have a specific focus on Atlantic Ocean and in both in in research and literacy development activities. We do have uh, three partners from U.S. and Canada, namely Duke University, Memorial University of Newfoundland, and. Universe, uh, University of Quebec, Quebec. and um, we also plan in that uh, these partners will be um, part of our ocean literacy tank and uh, we also invite maybe during uh, later coffee breaks and these two days to talk with many of you who might be interested in uh, collaborating with us on that. And uh, actually if if I'm good on time, that I would like now to give word to Paul, um, um, so he can maybe illustrate a bit more the transatlantic dimension of our work, how we will be playing. Thank you, Olga. I apologize for my voice. It has nothing to do with the Irish reception <clears throat> last night. <clears throat> and I know this is going to be as painful for you as it is for me, so I'll be quick. <clears throat> All right. So, the ENSO Canadian Healthy Oceans Network is a partnership between 12 universities across Canada and Fisheries and Oceans Canada as the primary partner. Thank you, Neil. That might help, but we'll see. And so we're focused primarily on natural science, but one of the... Um, smaller elements of the project is recognizing that if we want to affect change on ocean use, then we need to engage stakeholders. And so we see responsible as an excellent opportunity to improve the way that we do that. And so for our part, we give responsible access to 12 universities in Canada, as well as different entry points into DFO, which is a very complicated organization. Um, and we also provide material in the way of ocean science uh, to deliver to um, other ocean stakeholders. And so we have two broad themes. The broad objective, in the general sense, is conservation strategies for Canada's changing oceans. And so the two themes are uh, ocean ecosystem conservation strategies and how we can take advantage of efforts such as marine protected areas to maximize the efficacy of those efforts. The second major theme is key stressors and cumulative impacts and how they act together in how they um, affect ocean change. So the two themes do actually um, interface with one another quite well. Uh, and in terms of ocean planning and thinking about what will happen in the future, we see these as two very closely related and also very important issues. So I'm not going to go through all the different projects. One, my voice will not take it. And two, there's too much information to cover. But there's a series of integrated projects which build towards these common themes and provide outputs that we think will be very useful to different types of stakeholders, including Fisheries and Oceans Canada, who are the primary caretakers of Canada's oceans. And so over the next five years, if we're successful, uh, we hope to work very closely with them and with Responsible uh, to make that happen. If we are not successful with our proposal, some pieces of it will go ahead, smaller pieces, but nonetheless pieces of it. So we hope to continue this partnership irrespective um, of what happens with this proposal. And I think that's all I've got. Um, I'll go back to Olga to finish up. Thank you. And my apologies. Thank you very much, Paul. 
I hope your voice will get better through the evening. And uh, I also hope that the proposal will be successful and we will have uh, your university as a, a full partner. And uh, just to finish the presentation, that uh, we're really looking forward to um, strengthen our project contribution to, uh, with the Galloway Initiative, and we would like to uh, liaise more with uh, ongoing and forthcoming initiatives and uh, to establish collaboration with more Canadian and US partners, some of you present here today, and uh, <coughs> we would like to 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 continue with that and uh, to also I want to say that with the responsible project, the approach that we uh, developing, if you remember the, the the little prince and the and the rose, and you can think of all the um, scientific data other kind of information on the ocean, and all the different ways how we're going to find these doors to um, people's heart, for the little prince lives in everybody's heart, and we just need to find that way. So your information later can uh, build on our project. Thank you very much.